The harlot can praise the Lord. The fornicator and the adulterer, because the only qualification to praise the Lord is to have breath. Amen. But they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the dope dealer can't do that. The alcoholic can't do that. The fornicator and the adulterer can't do that. Amen. Oh, but when it comes to giving God some praise, oh, yes, Lord. those that don't sing, they can't sing and don't sing, that's all right. Amen. God said, I got Brother Green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that if I ask him, he's going to jump up. Woo, thank you. It could be all keen, all beat, but it's just the way it is. This is good to be in the house of God. Amen. 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 It would appear that since we've been through the storm, the Hurricane Harvey, there's been many storms that people have been going through. Mm -hmm. Seeing that after the storm, it just caused many other storms to arise. But just as Harvey passed by, this too shall pass. Amen. All the things that we go through, all the pain and the heartache, Amen. we know we're not going to be like this always. Amen. We are so honored to have a great man of God who has been so kind to me over the years to always invite me down when he goes places and things. I had a great time knowing him. First man, he got a funeral. He, he was all nuded up. He had a black cowboy hat, black little, one of those little bow ties, a black belt. I don't remember anything he had on. The <laughs> <laughs> only thing he didn't see is how it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, I met him there when he was at the funeral. That's how we began to know each other. And it is an honor for him to come and speak for us. Last time we heard him was when we did our outdoor dinner and everything. Yeah. And he was feeding people on the street. And we hope we get all that going again. But I asked for the Parker to come today and then come on Sunday. We was going to have a Saturday, but because we're cooking for Sunday, we got to have Saturday to cook. Amen. So we asked that he would come and bring the word of God. Amen. Yes, I'm disappointed that more folks didn't come. But, I'm, but I know that I might be disappointed, but God has appointed. Amen. 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 And so that's what we do. We take our, our lemons and make lemonade. Amen. Because the most important thing is we get to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. And you know, that way we can say, oh, y'all should have been there. Amen. I like doing that. Y'all should have been there. Hey, but how'd that go? I know we didn't make it. Oh, you should have been there. Amen. What happens at the river stays at the river. Amen. <laughs> so it's an honor to have Pastor David Park and his lovely wife. Amen. Amen. And just move out of the way, let him have his way, let him do whatever God wants him to do. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, it is a privilege for me to be able to be here with you. Privilege any time you get to stand and speak. Uh, I hate to use the word for God, but to speak God's word with yes. the intention of, uh, uh, of changing people's lives. Amen. And uh, the thing that, as a as as a preacher, you have to also remember you're not excluded from the message. Amen. Amen. You're, you're, you know, you're you're not excluded. Let me see if I can sing one here.
we're just family here. Yes. I just want to tell you about a time that David and I went for him to preach at a church one Sunday morning. It was a man who was about 67 years old, and his elderly mom and dad, those three, and me and David were all it was. He gave them the full, full meal deal, and God spoke to our hearts. We had a wonderful day. Amen. 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 scriptures with you this evening. Let me encourage you to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. All right. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians is a, is a letter that Paul wrote to the, to the, to the believers, to the Christians, Amen. those who had professed Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And so this book is not intended for non-believers. Wow. Now, am I saying that non-believers won't benefit from it? I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is he wrote it to the church at Ephesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Much as though your pastor comes every Sunday morning and he presents a word that God has laid upon his heart for those folks here. Now, sometimes he tries to single you out and talk real bad about you. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, he talk, he'll pick up it. Sally's pastor picks on her a lot and things like that. But in this particular case, this is written to believers. Yes. Right. And the reason I want to highlight that is this. I have a hunch that every one of us here tonight is a believer. Yes, Amen. Sir. So Amen. because of that, we can't say that belongs to those folks. Yes, sir. Amen. That's not for me. That's for those folks. Well, this is for God's children. Yes. Yes. Amen. yes. And some of this is not necessarily what you would call uh, politically correct. Come on. <laughs> well. And, and so it, it, it can seem a little hard. And why would I bring this tonight not knowing exactly who was going to be here? But now I'm here, I know who goes here. Amen. <laughs> and it doesn't change the fact of, yes. of, of what is said here. Amen. Because one of these spots may not fit you, one of mine. Yes, sir. Right. One of them might not fit Pastor Green, but it sure may fit me. Come on, come on. Or other way around. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because this letter was written to what church folks? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't written to the world. Mm -hmm. And so as the story goes on, we're going to end up kind of in the middle of the book. And it says, I therefore be prisoner of the Lord. Beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Yes. So this is Paul's word that claims that he's a what? This is group participation, right? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Claims he's a what? Claims he's a prisoner. Prisoner. Yes. Now that doesn't necessarily come any time at all with the positive connotation. Mm -hmm. But in this particular, in this particular case, it's not near as bad as what we think it is when we think about city inmates. Uh, you know, city prisoners, county prisoners, state prisoners, federal prisoners, right. things such as that. What we're talking about here is, is an individual that is bound together. Yes, sir. So what he says is what? I, therefore, as one who is bound to the Lord. Yes, sir. You know, we look at it again, we turn that back around, you know, we spend about $40,000 a year on, you know, on one state inlet. One, 40,000 a year. Lord's Prayer, you know, over there's got about 3,000 in there. Okay, so so look at what's going on on one particular unit here. But they, but, but they are bound together there. Yes, sir. They do what they're told to do or they're in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. And so Paul, from Paul's standpoint, he is confined to what? The very presence of the Lord. I am his prisoner. Yeah. He is in control of me. Bound together. Now I, I use it sort of like a husband and wife, but somebody real quick to go, well, I'm not her prisoner, he's not my prisoner. All this kind of nonsense. No, but you're bound together. Yeah, when you right. stand before the yeah. minister here, you stand before God, and you come together and say, I give up, I surrender. Yes. Right. yes. Well, that's what the man does. Right? Huh? But anyway, 
I give up, I surrender to one another to where we become what? We one. become one family. We yes. become one body. We become two. You know, Christmas time is the greatest time of the year for, for me to use the illustration I just love to use in this particular case is, is the peppermint candy. The peppermint candy comes with what? White and red. Yes. Unless you like the green spearmint, which is fine. There's no way in the world you can separate the white from the red without destroying the candy. There's no way in the world to separate the husband from the wife without destroying the family. Amen. Right. And so, right. so in this particular case, you see the bond that he's speaking about here? Yes. It's not just a judicial bond. It's a bond of agreement. I agree to be your servant. And Jesus the Lord is saying this. I agree to be your God. Yes. Right. Yes. And when I agree to be your God... I'm promising you, I'm going to be your God. Come on. Man. Now the issue sometimes comes in this particular case, as Paul is saying, on our end of the deal, we're not holding it up quite so well. Come on. Because he says, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. I urge you, I implore you to walk worthy now, in this particular case, in our particular time, we think of the word worth as it ain't worth that much money right. or it ain't worth the flip or all of this kind of stuff. But in this particular case, what he's talking about is what? This union, mm -hmm. this prisonership that we have with God. And we are to what? Walk worthy. Yeah. Now, what it honestly means when you boil it all down is this. It is this. To become godly. Yes, sir. I urge you. Some other translations use the word, I implore you to what? Become godly. Mm -hmm. Of the calling with which you were called. What are we called to be? Well, we're called to be godly. Yes. We're called to be followers of God. We're called yes. to be all these yes. kinds of things. And sometimes if we're not careful, it's like, well, you know, my, my calling is to do this. My gifting is to do that. My, uh, all this other thing. And if I, if I took the time to go through all of this stuff, that's what, he, that's what he's fighting against there. But the main thing about this is this. We're simply called out of what? Darkness. Yes. Yeah. We're actually called out of bondage to freedom. Yes. 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 To do what? Walk worthy of God. Yes. 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 Now, any of y'all got any children that you're not like real happy with? <laughs> well, let me just let me rephrase that in case you got children around here. Any of y'all children that y'all mom and daddy may not have been happy with? Amen. Amen. And they say stuff like this. Don't you act that way? It brings what? A bad name. Yes. yes. It, it's not worthy of who we are. Yes. And the way you act is not the kind of people we are. Right. This is not how we do things around here. And this is what he's trying to say. I, I implore you to walk in a manner that God is happy with you. Yes. yes. Verse 2, with all lowliness, with all humility. In other words, this, not number one. Now that phrase may show up through here four or five times or what God may direct me off of that. I don't know. <clears throat> with all lowliness, which is what? Walk. Live your life with all lowliness, with gentleness. And gentleness means meekness. Mm -hmm. And meekness means we live as a trained pet. Now there's a difference between the dog in the yard and the pet in the bed, right? right amen. Because the pet in the bed gets the treats, right? <laughs> the pet in the bed gets all this kind of stuff. But I don't know who trains who in that deal. But that's exactly what we're talking about, meekness here. Come on. Right. In order to, the, the, the dog out in the yard may have a task. The dog out in the yard may be the protector. And so you, you're not going to be as friendly with him. Why? Because he needs to be a little bit meaner. Or he could be a pain in the neck in the house and he's going outside, whatever the deal is. But you understand what I'm saying? Amen. This meekness doesn't mean milk toast. It don't mean being sissy. It means being in control of your life. And in control of your life, you are trying to be what? In service right. with the Lord. Yeah. Just like your pet is what? Trying to make you happy. Yeah. Man. Now, I mean, just since I started this deal, how come your dog's trying to make you happy? Because you're the one that's got the treat. Yeah. You're the one that's got the food bowl. You're the one I go, as we were coming over here today, some guy was driving down our own pickup truck, had his toolbox on the back and everything, and there's a little blue heater up there like this. All I could see from the front was this. 
Mm -hmm. A little head over the top of the cab, and he was having a ball. He was in heaven, 65, 75 miles an hour on top of that tool box. There was nothing better in life for him to do than be right there at that time. Right. But for that driver, he wouldn't be having fun. Right. What for that driver, he'd be walking. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to remember who's doing the driving, Man. who's doing the walking. Amen. All right, all right. Long suffering. Bearing with one another in love. Now, now listen to that. Listen to that statement there. Bearing with one another in love. And I started this whole thing with this. God is talking to, Paul is talking to <coughs> the church. And he said, you guys got to be alone. Yes. Right. I may not be what that says, but it seems to be bear with one another in love. You guys got to be alone. Why? Yeah. It's daddy's house. Yeah. It's daddy's house. And daddy's kids don't act that way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Daddy's kids don't act like the, the, the thugs on the street. All right. Daddy's kids don't act like the, the people that don't have a clue. Amen. Daddy's kids act like who? Daddy's kids. Amen. Amen. And if daddy treated you the way you treat one another, no, sister, he's talking to the church. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to the world here. Right. He's not telling the world y'all need to get along. He's telling the church you guys need to get along. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because you're the picture of me. I thought I'd wait a little longer than that, but you know, let's look at the church in America today. Come on. Mm. You know, it's a little disheartening that you only have this few here, but I'll guarantee you, you pick any church here in this town, and you try to have a meeting tonight, and I bet you percentage-wise, it'd be exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. Because God's people are what? We're getting ready for Thanksgiving. Yeah. We got things we got to do. We don't have time to go down there to that church. I mean, he's not, he don't have anything to say to me anyway. What? I'm already sealed. <laughs> yeah. Come on. And I'm set. Wow. And I got things I got to do. Come on. I'll pray for them. Besides, if we don't go, I don't go put nothing to play, right? Because I'm not going to make up on Sunday for that to get on that. Right? So that's, that's a whole different other thing. Because that's all wrapped right anyway, right? The money. <laughs> Come on. So, so you, we can't escape this stuff, unfortunately, what I'm saying. And the churches of America are what? Are not a good example of God's faithfulness to His Amen. people. When the churches can't even figure out what's right and what's wrong. Right. Amen. When they can't even figure out when the Bible says hmm. the man's to marry a woman and a woman's to marry a man, then we can figure out a, a clause that says, well, that's not really what he means. What he really meant was if you love one another, right. well, just go find you a chimpanzee or a poster of it or something. Come on. And fall in love with it <laughs> if that's the way you want to go. <coughs> Endeavoring to keep. And that word endeavor means sparing no effort. The unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Let me just throw a lot of that away and throw right in the middle where he says this, unity of spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about being what? One yes. family. Yes. One group of God's people. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the end result of that is this peace that we're talking about. Is this, it, it is this, this long-suffering, this patience with one another, this, this bearing with one another in love. Man, if it wasn't God, there wouldn't be a, there would be no love. Amen. Because Amen. who is love? God. It's not what is love, it's who is love. It's yes. not how much can you buy love for or any of this kind of stuff. If it weren't for God, there'd be no love. Now, you think it's bad now, take that out. Because Amen. even the worst of people love something, whether it's their pet cat, their neighbor, their granny, or whatever, they at least know how to love. Amen. Yes, yes. Let's just extract it and then see exactly how mean they'd be. There is one body. One spirit, just as we are called in one hope yes. of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, Amen. one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Yes. yes. And there's a lot of ones in there, and I think it just highlights the unity of the body of Christ as well as the body of believers here. And, 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 and we've already discussed how, how fragmented that can be. But what I want to, to highlight there is this. It's all in you. Yeah. And yeah. we're all in God's people. All, all of this stuff. The unity, what? This this empowerment, this hope. And, and, and hope is the expectation with the certainty that it's going to take place. Yes. Man, there is no hope in America today. Yes. You, 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 you have a parent. 
You have a, pre a presidential race and somebody loses, people don't get upset because their candidate loses. They tear half the country down. Yes. Is that a picture of hope? Come on. I mean, what does it take to tell them four more years and you vote the sucker out? Man. I mean, you won this time. When you lost this time, we'll lose the next time. Whatever the deal is, it's not worth all of what you're upset about. But the thing is this, they have no hope and they place all of their hope in whatever the candidate was. And let me put it to you this way, it's silly to me. Candidates only going to be there four years and they ain't going to get anything done except the last year. And you're counting on that? Come on. Give me a break. And all they're doing is doing the same thing the last 50 years did. And so nothing's going to get done. Your taxes are not going to change. They're not going to do anything for you, even though they're trying. It's just a, 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 a amalgamation of, of ignorance up there. And you place your hope in that. You're better off sitting down somewhere hoping the sun comes up in the morning. Come on. Amen. Because at least you can see that. Amen. But through God, yes, is the expectancy in the hope we have. This world is not our home. This world is not our home. Amen. We are just passing through. For our treasures, they're not down in the First National Bank. They're not at the next paycheck you get. Our treasures are laid up beyond the blue. Amen. And who's God? God. God is God. And if God has got them, you don't think he's going to withhold them from you, do you? You don't think when he gets there, he's going to say, well, I'm sorry, somebody broke in and took yours. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, we've been having a little inflation up here. We had to, you know, dole it out to some folks that didn't. You know, all these other guys, all the excuses our government gives us today as to why it's not working, God ain't going to be that way. Why Amen. Is God is love? He never tells a lie. That's right. I, and if he says he's going to do it, He's compelled to do it. Oh, yeah, God. Yes. Man. So where is our hope? Our hope can only come in Him. Now, I mean, you know, we may hope for a little snow at Christmas, or we may hope for a, you know, 12-point buck, or we may hope for, you know, this kind of thing. But it's more like, gee, God, if you, you know, it's more like a blessing than a hope, you know what I'm saying? One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God of all, and we are prisoners yes. of Him. We are bound together. We are chained to. Let me see if I can just make it real religious for you. <laughs> we are joint heirs with Jesus. Yes. yes. Verse 11, skip down to 11. And He Himself, meaning Jesus Christ, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. <clears throat> and, and this is... This is not necessarily the gifting of the spiritual that he's talking about here. It's the calling of people to a, a, to a position, apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, and teachers have come. But the whole purpose of that is to, to equip the saints. And then it says what? And right under that it says the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Yes. Man. So this, this is kind of like a category of people. In this particular case, it may not be you. You may not have been called to be a pastor. You may not have been called to be an evangelist. In that particular case, we're talking about more like a Billy Graham that goes forth because we've all been called to what? Share the good news. Yes. Amen. yes. We've all Amen. been called to, to scatter the seeds. We've Amen. all been called. And why wouldn't you be? I got a picture of you the other day. You're gonna, I got it with me tonight. You need to see it. The current sheriff of Refugio County went to Saskatchewan, Canada and shot a 400-pound white tail. He's huge. You don't think he's the, I, I sent him a text. I haven't talked to this guy in like four, five, six years. I sent him a text. Hey, I understand you started an oversight there. He used to be a game worker too, so he'd understand it. <coughs> it wasn't five minutes left back. Oh yeah, really? Where's the picture? Poo! Five minutes later. I haven't talked to him in years. But in, within 10 seconds, what? He's excited about that. Yes. He's excited yes. about that. And, and, and it was something that he was happy to share. And here we are, we were going through the world without ever sharing the news of Jesus Christ. And anybody else, we're afraid we never have them. We're afraid they, they may not accept it. Well, I guarantee you what? I'd rather go up before God and say, look, I tried. And he said, I know it. Instead of going, I didn't do nothing. He said, I know that too. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> I mean, we're going to stand and have to give account of what 
he said here is he has given some to be apostles, some prophets for what? The equipping of the saints, which is everybody else. Right. For what? The ministry. For the work of ministry. For the edification of the body of Christ. Edifying. Lifting up. And yes. you do such a good job with praise music and things like that. Lifting up. But what this thing is going to do is your life is to lift up Jesus Christ. Yes. Everywhere you go, people are not supposed to see you as much as they're supposed to see the Jesus in you. Yes, yes. And this Jesus in us is then what? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yes. Which was good when we were five, six, or seven, and we got to be about 14 or 15, and we thought, I'm hanging out with him. I'm sticking his light in my pocket because they're having a whole lot more fun than these, these holy rollers are. Wow. Come on. Mm -hmm. I think there's a phrase in the Bible that says something like this until that day. Yeah. That could be a hymn, I'm not sure. Until that day. For the ministry. Edify. We all come to a unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God. And our faith is what? In the knowledge of the Son of God. But we come to a unity, which means we're now all prisoners in. <clears throat> we're all one body to a perfect man. To the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. To a perfect man, to the measure and the stature and the fullness of Christ. If you don't quite understand that, the New International Version says this, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In other words, we become like Jesus. Yes. All right. We understand who He is. We understand all the facets of Him, or we understand all we're able to understand about Him. We come to what? A mature understanding. And that mature means one that comes with wisdom. One that comes with the facts. One that, you know, one that, that, that is usable because it is now dependable. Perfect and mature is being complete. It doesn't necessarily mean without flaw. It, let's just put it this way. It means just the right thing. Amen. It also means you reach the goal. Is what's it say? You've been gifted. You've been given prophets and apostles and teachers to what? Uh, uh, teach us, equip us, and once we get equipped, we're what? We reach the goal. Yes, sir. We reach the goal. Now that don't mean you sit so. That means what? Now that you understand this, there's a place in this ministry for you, and in this ministry you find your place as a mature one. No longer like a child who waits on others to take care of them. Now you're one of those who has the position to go forward. Yes. Because why? We're a, supposed to be a mighty army. Yes. Mm -hmm. A mighty army of God that advances forth in, in the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But we have to what? We got to be mature. We got to be perfect for the for the job. We've got to be just the right thing. Verse 14 says it right there. We should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now listen to that, would you? <coughs> Probably one of the hardest things there is for me to, to discuss with people is how come there's so many different churches? Isn't that what that says? Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. What's the difference between Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterians, Episcopalians? What's the difference between Pentecostal churches and the Baptist churches? What's a, what, why, why have we got so many? And quite frankly, I want to say stuff like this. Because we're not mature. We're just people. And we fight a lot. Yes. <laughs> we're too much like family. We're the, we're the family of the parks and not the family of God. Okay? But you know, there's some things in there that are not doctrinal. Okay? There's some divisions there have nothing to do with the doctrine of the Scripture itself. It's more on the structure of the church. How we, how we do ministry. In fact, in some cases, it's just simply no more than how you send missionaries. So it's not a doctrinal issue. So you could call, you might say, all of the Protestant churches together under one umbrella, which is called what? The crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. And they should all agree on that. That's right. Yeah. Are they not the children of God? 
Now, one little bunch over here don't do this, another bunch over there don't do that. That's why I tell people in, in the Baptist church, they, they, uh, they like to use, you know, they don't emphasize the Holy Spirit much, and, and they call him a ghost because they're afraid of ghosts. So Baptist guys are not real good. I mean, they'll, they'll throw the word spirit in there and they'll say we're empowered by the spirit and we'll do all that stuff. But they really don't like to spend a whole lot of time on the gifting. And I've been in several Baptist different studies on the gifting of the Holy Spirit. And it's really cool. I mean, they give you a lot of explanation as to what you know healing is and a lot of explanation as to what tongues is and a lot of explanation all that. They explain it real good. But down on the bottom, you know what they say? I'll go find your gift. That's what they say. Everyone, oh, okay, just go find your gift. Why? Because they don't have enough experience to know exactly what it is. Yes. They don't have enough yeah. experience to, to understand exactly how it's empowered them and done things in areas, let's say, that the Pentecostals do. Okay? Is it, is it wrong? No. It's not wrong. It's just the gift. But not everybody here likes cheesecake either. Right. Amen. Not everybody here, and not everybody here likes country western music. Not everybody here, you know. Unfortunately, there's probably someone here that doesn't like ice cream, you know, which would be kind of what's good for me. <laughs> more for me. Right. You know, these kinds of. But the main thing is the main thing. Amen. Jesus right. died and rose again. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. What's after that? It's per second. Yes, sir. Right. We confess with our mouth, believe with our hearts, what? God, yeah. Jesus died and rose again, and you will be what? Saved. Saved. It doesn't say all of this doctrine stuff, all of that stuff over there, all of this and all of that. It says if you'll do this, you're on the road. But even in this other stuff, we get caught off, caught up and distracted with what he's trying to say here. <clears throat> Verse 14, and we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plot. Now in our lifetime, we've seen a lot of big religious guys crumble. Because of what? Trickery? Some particular guys in the, in the let's call it the, the, the realm of, 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 of sexuality just took their eyes off Jesus. Oh, now man. what? The trickery of the devil. Yes. To, to, to tell them whatever it was that justified them. We don't have to look real hard to justify our own sins, do we? No, we always got a good reason or a good excuse. And so those guys do too. I'm saying they're right. I'm just saying... You know, they got to stand before God for them. Right. We should no longer be children. We should no longer be immature. Because what he said, we're supposed to mature. I'm always amazed when I go to a church and then somebody in the church will ask a deacon who's somewhere around 75 years old to pray. And you notice that most of the time during the offering time. So in there, let's say 65 years of Christian living, the only prayer they still know is, Lord, thank you for the gifts we've received. Let us be faithful and true to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's a deacon. That's an immature person. Now, granted, there's people that don't, just can't pray out loud, okay? I understand that. But somewhere along the line, you can change it to, you know, thank you, Lord, for this week. We promise to be faithful to you. Come on in, as faithful as you are to us. Yeah. Somewhere, there's, you see what? No change since they were like in the fourth or fifth grade. They are still <coughs> stuck in an immature spirituality. Am I saying they're not going to get into heaven? I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is what? They're not doing anything that was said here. They've not been equipped for service. They're in it. They're just not capable of doing it. Why? They're still children. Mm -hmm. So it would be like having a six-year-old who's now in charge of your church. Wow. Well, I'm sorry. Y'all got Pastor Green, so that's probably not a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's got more maturity. He just acts like a six-year-old. 
Did you catch what I'm saying here? Oh, yeah. God can only do with who he's got to do it with. Yeah. Is it any is it any is it any wonder why the world is winning this mm -hmm. situation? <clears throat> but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things to him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together. But whatever a joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth in the body for the edifying of itself in love. So all of that says this, so it may grow up so it can what? Edify itself. That's what all that stuff says. I'm trying to keep this short. To grow up, the church, the believers in the church, mature in Christ so they can edify itself in love. God's love. A forgiving love. A love that looks beyond our faults. A love that looks to our needs. A love like Christ when he gave his all. This I say in verse 17. Therefore testify the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Ignorance does not mean stupidity. Ignorance means you don't have the facts. Yeah. You may be as intelligent as you can be, but when somebody hands you a violin, you're pretty ignorant. Because why? You ain't never done that before. You're capable of learning it. You've got the instrument. All it takes is what? Maturity. Right. It's no different than God's Word. It's no different in God's Word. It's no different in God's Word. That we have to be <clears throat> what? And this uses some, some, some pretty heavy words to, to be alienated. To be ignorant. Because of the blindness of their heart. The source of the issue. Now, part of the thing here is this. How come the heart's not seeing? Is it because it's blind or it ain't looking? Because as we begin to kind of read this stuff, we're talking about believers. Believers who are going to get themselves caught up in the ways of the world. Why? Because they're blind. Or they're ignorant. Or they're bold. Who being past, verse 19, feeling, had given themselves over to the lewdness to work all uncleanliness with greed. Yeah. Now, I don't know what all that means, but I know this. That ain't God's stuff. Amen. Yeah. When we start talking about lewdness, we start talking about really bad stuff. Yeah. We're talking about lewd and crude. We're talking about, you know, we... Since this girl came out the other day with with, with being attacked by that producer guy, uh, everybody's coming out of woodworks. Yeah. Yeah. And now we got all these men that are supposed to be uh, printed and printed taking on uh, printed taking means chasing little boys. Well, that's all coming out. So when one starts, they all come out, of, and, and that's called lewdness. Not the coming out of it, but everything that took place. It's filthy. It's ugly. It's anything but right. All right. Yeah. And what we see here is this. They, they, they were ignorant only in the simple fact of this. They thought they'd never be caught. So who's fooling who, huh? Now all these years later, these things are coming out. And sometimes it even causes me to go, who cares now? Well, that individual did. Because that individual has to go through their life every day with that thought. Some of you may have experienced it too back from when you were younger. Where somebody made a, an inappropriate gesture towards you. And, and it still affects who you are. It, it damages your trust in people when these things take place. All right. well, thank God for God. Yeah. Amen. Amen come in in the midst of those things and not change them 
But you know, some of these words that he spoke about here in this love is for us to, to overcome that. Now, please don't hear me try to make that stuff simple and easy. The psychologist would probably tell you what you need to forget. It. Can you forget it? <laughs> but that pain and that anger that we have in our heart is is our issue, not theirs. Mm -hmm. And we have to deal with that, and that can only be dealt with when we look at those people what the same way God looks. And God says, "You are a sinner." You need to repent and you need to ask for forgiveness. We're not God. We can say, You were wrong and you didn't do me right. You need to go to God. I don't want this pain anymore. I don't want this misery anymore. I want it to be for God. And we take it before the Lord. And we lay it out on his feet a thousand times until one day the pain is gone. Amen. If not, we carry that burden. It only gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <sighs> Verse 23. Well, let's look at 20. But you have not so learned, but have you not so learned Christ? In you. Compared to what? An ignorance. We have learned Christ. These guys are all what? Church folks. They're all what we would call believers. Christians. And he says, you knew that. When you made the decision, or you wouldn't have made the decision. I was saved when I was probably five, six years old, before I was in the first grade. I still remember. Do I know all of the theological significance of what went on there? I absolutely do not. But I know this. When I was a little kid in vacation Bible school, when I was a little kid in the Sunday school class, they taught me about Jesus. Nice. And I didn't understand what all that death and resurrection meant. I didn't, I didn't know, but I understood that if you, if, if you throw your net out on one side of the boat, you don't catch anything, and he tells you to throw it out on the other and you catch everything, you need to be following him. Amen, man. If he tells you to throw it out on the right side, you need to fish on the right side. Yeah. If, 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 he can, if he can take a few uh, loaves of bread and, and, and a few fish and he can feed a multitude of people but on more than one occasion, he's the guy I need. When somebody Man. tells me without Jesus you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna get to go to heaven, that's all I needed to understand. I didn't need to understand much more about Jesus than he's the only thing I needed to get there. Amen. Now I ended up being like a whole bunch of these Ephesian folks. Amen. I got a little ignorant. As I got a little older, and my attention span got real thin, and the attraction level got to be a lot greater than my attention span. Yeah. And so I wasn't necessarily what you would call a sterling example of a child of God, but I would never tell you I wasn't a child of God. Come on. Mm -hmm. Because I knew to be on the shadow of the power. That no matter how disappointed he was with me, he wasn't going to turn his back. Mm -hmm. He was going to seek me through this. And here I stand. <clears throat> 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is where he's taking these people to. He didn't say get a new spirit, did he? Right, right. He said get renewed. Yeah. Which is why you have revivals. To, to make them, it, 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 you know, it, it has to be a revival. And it has to be for the church. Man. Why? Because if you were lost, you wouldn't have a Bible. Yeah. If we were getting lost people, we'd just be having Bibles. Right? Because it's a revival. you got to have a life in order for it to be renewed. And, and I think that's what revivals are. I mean, so many people go, oh, I remember the days we had big revivals. We had people come and we have 75,000 people come down to, you know, the front. And I mean, it was great. And it was great. And there is places for that to take place today. Yes. yes. 
you know, that every day, if each one of us said something to somebody about that. Amen. If each one of us would go share the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't even have to go up there and give the four spiritual laws. All you got to do is walk up there and go, you ain't going to believe what Jesus did for me. Hmm. You would not believe what Jesus has done for me. <laughs> and if you don't believe it yourself, you need to check around and see what Jesus has been doing for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because if you ain't checking, you know, I'm not saying he ain't doing it, I'm just saying this, you're, you're kind of like taking it for granted. Or maybe this, he just thought, you ain't looking, I ain't doing it. You know? Until you start looking, I ain't doing it. Why? Because I want you to follow me. I want you to be mature. I want you to understand how much I love you. And so he does what he goes out his way to continue to attract us. Renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Now righteousness means this, doing things God's way. That's Amen. All righteousness means. It means doing things what things? All things. Because over here, a minute ago, and talk, I don't know if I did it or not, I tried to skip some of this stuff. Talk about how it goes over here. Talks about lying, talks about being corrupt, talks about stealing, talks about doing all kinds of stuff like that. You know? And, 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 and those things apply and everything. It applies in your private life, it applies in your business life. But what it, but what it says is here, what this, it, you don't have to worry about if you'll renew the spirit of your mind and you'll be like God in the things you do in the thinking of your mind. And then he says in holiness. This is probably where I've come to tonight. Holiness means this. Totally set apart from the world. Yes. 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 Totally set apart from the world. As I said earlier, you have a revival in any church in this town. And the set apart for Christ are going to be a wall. Wow, wow. They're going to be getting stuff ready for Thanksgiving. Because why? They're more worried about the turkey than they are in the relationship with Jesus. Lord have mercy. You ask them that question and say, man, you don't understand. I teach Sunday school. I do this. I do that. I give my tithe. I do all these things. I understand you do. But let me just ask you what's primary in your life. Well, you don't understand. I got a hard life to live. I understand your life's hard because you probably have to put Jesus first. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. You put Jesus first and everything else will fall in line. Yes, sir. Right. Let me just ask you this. If you're being halfway successful now, how successful do you think you'll be if you put Jesus in the lead of this dude? Amen. Because he can do anything but what? Faith. Chances are what? We got a 50 50 chance. Hmm. He ain't got none. Well, wow. Well. He can only do perfect. Amen. He can only do righteous. Oh, okay. He can't do half perfect. He can't do half righteous. And his holiness is this. We have to be in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. We gotta live. Yeah. We gotta get in with, let me just use this phrase, we gotta get in with the dirty folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't gotta be dirty. Yes, sir. All right. We don't gotta be like them to read some. You got to go to some of the places. You don't have to. Go to work. They're mm -hmm. there. Go to Walmart. They're there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go to a family reunion. They're there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go anywhere you want to. They're there. Because they ain't what? They ain't here. Mm -hmm. And most you may find out is this. The people at least expect a relationship with the Lord. And they can encourage you. And you can encourage them. Yeah. Well, I'll quit. <clears throat> but I want to challenge us all. Pastor, people, wives, to what? Don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. Go back to your first love. Yeah. Go back to the time you remember where you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yeah. and you were oh so happy. You were, you were excited because because honestly at that time he was real. And sometimes we think he's real but he's so far away. And you know how far away he is? If he's here with you, he ain't that far away. Is he here with you? Let me see. One, two, three. Yep. Well, two or three are together. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we can never get out of the yeah. Which should cause you to feel bad. 
Kind of like your mama got eyes on the back of her head. She knows everything you did and what you do. But it's good because she's there for the hour. Let's pray. Father, we thank you ever so much for this evening. We thank you for your words of uh, yeah. correction yeah. and your words of encouragement. <clears throat> Lord, help us to, to, to put these in place. Lord, help it to not just be a book in the Bible with a lot of neat things that he said to those people. Lord, help us to hear you saying that to us today. In the little areas of our lives where we slip and in the big areas of our lives where we slip, that, that you will pull us back in unity with you. Lord, if there's things you need us to be doing, Lord, we ask that you'll direct our paths to do those things, Lord. If, if there's places you need us to go, direct our paths, Lord. And for this congregation and for these people, Lord, we just ask that you'll open their eyes, that you will continue to, to direct this pastor and his wife as they, they minister to the, these people to, uh, to uh, bring the good news of Jesus Christ and, and, and uh, as well as to... Uh, Lift them up and instruct them and, and encourage them to, to, to edify. Father, we just thank you for uh, their courage. We ask that you continue to provide for their physical needs, their financial needs, Lord, and their, uh, their, their health needs. Father, we just thank you for what we see take place in this church <clears throat> on this morning. And Lord, we just expect some more great things, Lord. Lord, for each one of us here today, we again just thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together. Lord, it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.